Um, I was God talking about temptation. He said, I can resist anything but temptation. That's our attitude nowadays. Uh, you know, you hear about that guy who's on a diet, and he's on a diet and he's really trying to lose weight, and he wasn't eat, eating no sweets or anything. And, and uh, once in a while, he'd reward himself, you know, a little bit. And so he's, uh, he's doing real good, and one day, one day he went right by, he knew he was going to pass by Krispy Kreme donuts. And he could feel it coming up. I, I know I'm because I always turn in there, I always turn in there. And he said, uh, Lord, I don't know if you want me to do this or not, but if you, if you make a parking place right in front of the building, then I'll know it's all right for me to stop today. And sure enough, after 13 trips around the block, there was an open parking place there now. That's the way we are. <laughs> That's the way we are. Ain't that right? All right, I've got a new baby here. I ain't. Stand up and show. Lord, look at that little fella like that. Lordy mercy. Look at him. <laughs> Let's give him a big hand here this morning. We're glad they're down. Visiting with us from down over in uh, Knoxville area, Tennessee. Appreciate them being here with us. That little man. He's come out and went visiting with us yesterday. Uh, had a good time. Also, uh, now, don't y'all pray for the people that will be traveling from Rockingham tomorrow. They got about a, they got a probably a, at least a five-hour trip. Uh, the people from Gastonia have about a four-hour trip. Uh, they'll be driving. We'll, we've got, well, in a bus uh, going up in mountains. But uh, pray for safety. Please pray for safety. Uh, don't forget, ladies, what I said about the clothes. You got some clothes to bring tonight for the girls. Uh, and then uh, uh, pray for everyone, pray for the services, especially for services. One more thing, with a hundred of us gone, we need everybody else to be here Wednesday night. Lord, please don't think, oh, well, preacher and everybody's gone, ain't no use of me going. Lord, no, we don't, we don't need that. We need you to be here to support your church Wednesday night, okay? All right, take your Bible, turn to John chapter 15. And uh, I want to read some scripture here this morning. Amazing statement made by the Lord Jesus himself. Uh, all of you that are visiting with us today are here. The Spicers are up here from Florida, and they they're early for camp, head to camp. Ain't that right, Press? Ain't that we're ready to go, ain't we? Amen. Blake got the fireworks. Hallelujah, boy! I'm telling you, we had fireworks second to none last year, and uh, it filled up the swimming pool, and we got in trouble. So we're going to move them over a little bit. If we don't set the woods on fire, we'll be we're in good shape. John chapter number fifteen. And I want you to look at verse number 19, right quick. John 15, 19. Got your Bible? Look at it. Well, it's 18. Look at verse 18 first. If the world hate you, that's a strange thing to say. The Lord said, you're my followers. You're good Christian people. The world's going to hate you. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. That's comforting, isn't it? We get hated for being a Christian. Just remember, they hated Jesus first. You're in good company. If you were of the world, the, law, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Now, here's why he tells you why that happened. Now, I'm going to preach this morning on the subject, why the world hates Christians. The Lord here said, just like the, the Lord said it would be, have always hated Christians. It's never been any different. It is still different today. Sometimes people are in shock when they get right with God and they start living for the Lord. You'd think everybody would be happy, but no, sir. The world, as in general, out there this morning, hates Christians. That's what he said. And you know what he said? He said, they hated me before they hated you. And the truth is, this morning, stand for the Lord, do right, go to church, read your Bible, try to live a Christian life. The world at by, by large, will hate you. People can't handle that. People say, well, I don't want nobody to hate me. I don't either, but I don't want, I don't want to disappoint the Lord either. I'd rather him be happy with me than this world. You cannot, y'all listen to me this morning, you cannot, you cannot have one foot in the world and one foot with the Lord. You can't be in heaven and hell at the same time. You cannot live wrong and live right at the same time. You cannot please the Lord and live for the devil at the same time. It's either or. You're going one way or the other. There's no middle ground. I'm, I'm either going this way 
or I'm going that way. People say, well, I'm just standing still. You're going backwards because everything keeps moving. Time keeps moving. You're backing up. So this morning, let's think about that a little bit. You know, why, Brother Danny, why does the world hate Christians? Well, I will to give you a few little thoughts here this morning, and, and we'll go. First of all, the, the world hates Christians because a Christian is somebody who believes the unbelievable. We believe stuff that's unbelievable to the world. When, it, when you really think about it, if you, didn't, if you didn't know about God and the Bible, church, you'd think, man, them people are crazy. And that's the way we look to them. You know what we believe? Uh, we, believe that, uh, we believe that a person becomes a Christian by believing the unbelievable. That's how you get to be a Christian. You believe something that's unbelievable. You know, how do you believe something's unbelievable? Well, it's like this. We believe that a man uh, 2,000 years ago was conceived in a virgin mother's womb. A little girl, a uh, young, probably teenage girl by the name of Mary. And we believe that the Holy Ghost overshadowed her and she became with child. There's 8 billion people in the world and if you counted all the ones that died, they might be 10 total that's been on this world. And every one of them, except Adam and Eve, got here by a mother and a daddy. Jesus Christ got into this world with no earthly father. Think about that. Now, you know what science says? Impossible. You know what we say? We believe it. We believe the unbelievable. How many of you believe this morning that Mary was a virgin when Jesus was born? Believe that? I do. I do. I don't have a bit of trouble believing that. You say, oh my goodness, that's the most ridiculous thing. One man said, well, how in the world do you think a, a, a baby can't get in the world without, uh, without an earthly father? And we say, well, Adam and Eve got here without a mom or a daddy. What do you think about that? Uh, uh, you think that's something. Uh, they, they didn't even have a belly button. What do you think about that? Uh, they said, you'd look weird without a belly button, but belly buttons look weird if you do got one. I don't know. Uh, but they, uh, Adam and Eve were just born grown. <laughs> uh, God made Adam grown, and then he took the rib out of him and made Eve grown, just like that. Oh, that's ridiculous. We believe that. I believe it. I don't have a bit of trouble believing that. You say, you honestly believe that all the people in the world uh, come out? And, yeah, sure do. Uh, he said, do you believe God just said life? And I was like, yep, I believe that. Uh, that's better than believing it came from a rock and primordial soup like they believe. That's what they believe in college. That's what they believe. Hey, you you got to have room for rent up there, brother, uh, to believe something that crazy. Uh, we believe what the Bible says. We believe Mary was a virgin and, and, to, and stayed a virgin until Jesus was born. And then her and Joseph had normal kids after that. We believe he lived a sinless life. We believe he died on the cross uh, for our, our sins. And we believe we believe unbelievable stuff. We believe this morning, think about this now. If you didn't, if you didn't know this and you didn't go to church, we believe that you can get out of your seat and come down here and kneel down. You don't have to do that. You can bow your head right there where you're at. And the blood of a Jewish man that was shed on the cross 2,000 years ago magically in their eyes washes their sins away and God don't hold them against you. You ever thought about how unbelievable that is? You say, well, you mean to tell me what's that got to do with anything? There were thousands of Jews crucified. They sure was. And only one of them could wash sins away. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. No, that's why people hate us. People say, oh, gosh, y'all make me sick. You believe the blood of that old slaughterhouse religion? Sure do. Sure do. We believe he was led to the slaughter, like the Bible said. And he opened up his mouth, like the Bible said. And that his blood made atonement for old sorry good for nothing people like me and he paid for my sins and by faith in that I'm justified and my sins are gone that's unbelievable but I believe it don't you that's why I hate to say no you got to be a good person like Mother Teresa well, I wouldn't count on it uh, uh, but uh, uh, you got to do this you got to you got to do this that and God will never accept you no I tell you what you got to do I don't care what your past has been your pre your future can be spotless you can have all your sin washed away everybody here today anybody here today can get down on your knees and say I'm putting my faith in the blood of Christ and that blood washes your sins away in the sight of God, you have no sin on you.
That's unbelievable, brother. And we believe it. We believe in the authority and preservation of the Scripture. We believe there's a this earth that has the very words of God in it uh, to us. We believe that laying right here. We believe that God breathed the Scripture and a Christian is a person who believes the unbelievable. But let me say secondly this morning, a Christian is a person who knows the unknowable. We know stuff that's impossible to know. We know stuff that you can't know. That's why they hate us. And if there's one thing big shot educated people hate, it's a whole country wreck believing something that they don't know. <laughs> it drives them crazy. Uh, they just say, oh, you people. Oh, uh, you know, this is about, well, I seen that somebody sent me the other day. This girl, she was on there and she said, I'm, have y'all seen that? She said, I'm sick of what the Bible says. Quit telling me what the Bible says. I put down, I'm tired of hearing what the Bible Did anybody see that video? She said, I've had it up to hear. Blah, blah, blah. He said, well, Brother Danny, what, if you got to talk to her, what would you say? I'd say, the Bible says. <laughs> I'd tell her what the Bible says. That's a sword, buddy. That'll cut. That'll get the job done. That little girl needs it. She needs Jesus. She needs the Lord and the sword of the Spirit. A Christian is one who knows the un that means beyond the bounds and man's limitations and all that. Now, like where'd we come from? We have the answer. We know where you come from. No, sir, you're you're crazy. They've been studying that in laboratories for years. Scientists are still trying to find the origin of life and all of that. And then Frankie, who's five years old, sitting over there this morning. Raise your hand, brother. Raise your hand. Tell everybody hallelujah. Uh, Frankie knows where we come from. Ain't that something? That drives them up a wall. That drives them. You know why? Because they worship education. Uh, this world worships education. You ain't been to college. You ain't been to college. You ain't been to college. There's some of the dumbest people ever in my life got a college degree. And I'm not saying education's wrong. Wrong. I I go to the bank and and give them give give check cash or something or pay a bill and I've got in my head figured up my change and everything to the pin and it takes her to just to buy some buttons and everything. All you gotta do is subtract seventeen dollars and thirty cents from a hundred. What is that? Eighty two thirty. Right? You can check me on that, but I'm up here preaching in front of a bunch of people. Eighty-two dollars and thirty cents. I mean, you that some and then she's been to college and has to figure out the machine. Uh, uh, your kids don't even know how to add and subtract seventeen dollars and ninety cent from uh, uh, one hundred dollars. Was I right? Somebody tell me. I think I was. Y'all don't know either. It don't make no difference. Here. Um, uh, just guess at it. Redneck rounded off there. That's right. But you know what? They, they, don't, they don't know how to write no more. Everything got to be done by computer. Don't know. They wouldn't know how to get from here to Asheville if they didn't have their phone. I'm telling you this, this morning, we know the unknowable. We know where we come from. Now look, if you don't believe the Bible, here's how you believe we got here. This is what the major science in the world believe all the world got here this way. Three and a half billion, give or take a few hundred million, years ago, floating protein molecules, molecules got into primordial soup. Now, if you stop them and say, where'd the primordial soup come from? Well, there's an unknown, yeah, there's an unknown cause, right? You don't know it, and I do. They hate us. They think we're egotistical. They think we're stuck on ourselves. No, we're, we're dumb. We don't claim to be smart. We just believe what he said in the book and we have common sense. You know common sense is just about going out of style. I mean, Lord have mercy, it ain't too common no more. And they believe that something happened. That's what the scientists believe. Something happened, it sure did. And the molecule made a copy of itself. And then another copy, and another copy, and finally arranged themselves into what we call a cell. And then that cell multiplied organisms and were, were created. Mm, interesting word there. And three billion years later, uh, it's been more and more complicated. And 375 million years ago, one of them crawled out of the sea. And four million years ago, um, uh, 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 they had a be developed, developed a brain and could think and reason. And 200,000 years ago, Homo sapiens, that's us, uh, uh, appeared and learned how to make agriculture and organize 
uh, uh, warfare and colonies and civilization. That's what they believe. All of that by accident. We believe in the beginning God, the heaven and the earth. Now the reason an atheist can't find God, same reason a thief can't find a policeman. He ain't looking for him. That's right. Uh, you, you, God's easy to find if you're looking for him. But if you're stealing, you don't want to see the cop. You know, you know. Uh, if you're if you're if you're shacking up and getting drunk, you don't want to meet me find meet the Lord. Of course not. So you say, oh, I don't believe there is a God. Try to get yourself out of trouble. Because there is a God, you're going to answer to him one of these days. And so, well, we believe the unbelievable, y'all. We believe, we believe in one. Uh, uh, it's unbelievable that he made it. He made everything. He spoke and it was there, brother. We know how we got here. We know what we're doing here. And I'll tell you something worse than that. We know where we're going when we die. That drives them crazy. Nobody knows what happened. Speak for yourself. That's the talk of, there's people think, if we don't know it, nobody else can either. Really? The Apostle Paul said, I know in whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded. Paul knew where he was going when he died. John said, we know that we have eternal life and we pass from death to life. Peter said, you have a place in heaven reserved for you. I'm going to tell you this morning on the authority of the Word of God, I know where I'm going when I leave this world. Not because I'm good, I'm not good. Not because I'm a preacher, not because I wear a tie. That ain't got nothing to do with it. I know where I'm going when I die because I, as a sinner, put my faith and trust in what Christ done for me on the cross and therefore He wrote me out a ticket and into heaven when I leave. I know that today. No, you just think you do. No, you say that because you don't know. Just because you don't know something don't mean nobody else don't. Now, I went I, I went to the airport the other day and flew down to Springfield, Missouri. And I got down there uh, to Charlotte. Now they do everything on your phone. I don't even know how to do that. Carrie, sent, Carrie, Carrie done all that for me. And got on there and sent my, my boarding pass to my phone. So now all you got to do is just put it and scan your phone over. It's getting close. Getting close. Scan your phone over and go get on the airplane. And when I got there... That guy said, uh, there's a lady here, man here. He said, uh, uh, her ID, please. I pulled out my driver's license. I'm Danny Castle. And I had an address on there. He looked at, uh, looked at me, looked at it, looked at me. And he, he said, scan your phone there. And that's the only thing that got me in on that airplane. I didn't go up there and say, uh, I need to go to Springfield, Missouri. He said, well, where's your ID? Uh, I go to church every Sunday. He said, well, listen, you crazy nut. What's wrong? I don't care if you go to church. What's wrong? What's wrong? You say, but you don't understand. I'm a preacher. Let me on the plane. Said, Get out of here, you crazy. I'm going to call the cops on you. What are you trying? We got, we got a thousand people standing line behind you. What's wrong with you? You lost your mind? And I said, but listen, I pay my bills. Wow, I'm impressed, man. Get out of the way. Let somebody, you know what he wants? He wants to see that ticket. He wants to see that ticket. When I put that phone up there and it scanned that thing, right this way, Mr. Castle. I go in, sit down on that plane. First thing I do is ask the Lord to take all the dams off of it because they've been cussing that thing all morning. Where's that blank plane? Where's that blank plane? Take them off, Lord. I don't want to be on one like that. And then I asked the Lord to help me. And I, t- and then I said, Lord, put your everlasting arms underneath this thing and get us where we're going. And I sit back and open my Bible and read and let the pilot take me to Springfield, Missouri. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, many, many, many years on a cross, my payment was paid, my reservation was paid for, and I put it in when I was 18 years old at Nebo Baptist Church, laying on my face. I got my reservation made, and brother, when it comes time for me to cash in and cross the other side, I ain't going to say I'm a preacher. I ain't going to say I go to church every Sunday. I'm not going to say I, 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 they are not interested in that. I'm going to say, Lord, remember the blood that was shed on the cross for my sin. I'm in, brother. I'm in. Hallelujah, people. I know where I'm going when I leave this world. They hate us because we know that. They don't. We know it. They don't. Uh, it ain't our fault. They can do it too if they want to. Let me tell you this. You know why the world hates Christians? A Christian is somebody who can do the impossible. 
How do we do something that's impossible? Supernatural strength. There, Christians endured things that there's no way they could have made it without somebody supernatural helping them. I know a little girl up in the mountains. She loved the Lord. That one of the most godly little ladies. She was probably in her, I don't know, in her 40s last time I saw her. That was a long time ago. And uh, her and her husband had trouble. And they, they had one. She'd, lift, she'd stand up and sing in church. And she loved the Lord and, and all that. And she wound up, uh, wound up going, going, going to a doctor somewhere. Somebody, something happened to her. She had to go to a doctor down in, uh, toward Greensboro or there. One of these hot shot doctors. And she's from up in the mountains. A real mountain little girl. I, I'm, you know, I'm partial at my mom's from Spruce Pine. And I think further back in the mountains you go, the better I like it. And, uh, and it's, uh, you know, people just got more sense. And um, they, as, as a general rule. And she was like that. Just loved the Lord, carried her Bible. And that doctor down there, uh, for some reason or another, developed a liking for her. Uh, got a crush on her and started and started hitting on her when she come in for a visit and ask her out. And he's this big shot educated doctor. And he said, he said, he just thought she's cute, I guess, a little country accent, the southern belle and all that. And he said, I, I like that girl. And she said, Why, doctor, I'm a married woman. <laughs> it blew his mind. He thought, wow, anybody be laughing at me. I'm, I'm a millionaire. <laughs> And and he made further advances, and she went back down there, and she told me, she said, Brother Danny, she said, I went down there one day, and he handed me the keys. He had bought me a brand new Porsche, and handed me the key, I think it's Porsche. And she said, Here it is, it's all yours. She said, Why well, I can't take that. <laughs> That's a good old country girl like that. He, he said, What kind of a person are you? Well, that just made it worse. He, he you know, he thought he like, you know, a man made. To conquer like a chase, you know, and uh, that it made it worse. He kept pursuing her and pursuing her, and finally got mad and hit her in the jaw. I think they had a big mess. She sued him. They sued the hospital. Something turned into a big mess. And and his, uh, he thought he thought, how could you? How could you know? The world looks at us and they see us go through stuff like that, and they think, how could you do that? How could you do? That? Nobody in the right mind like Job. Nobody in the right mind like Harlan Papa who they took in, in communist prison and stood him up against a, a, a wall like that right there, 15 inches from the wall, and he stood there for two weeks. And every time he fell, they'd slap him, hit him, knock him, prop him back up because he saw his eyes going to burn out. And he wouldn't deny the Lord. And they put him in cages. They put him in box of cages, not, not half as big as that right there, with a cage with nails draw, draw, uh, drove in them on all four sides and put them Christians in there, balled up like that, and left them. And they stayed in there, they bled to death. You know, the world says that's impossible. You can't do that. A Christian is somebody who can do something that's impossible. There's somebody helping us. Have you heard anybody say, I don't see it happening? And we're not, it ain't because of the Sunday school. And the Sunday school teacher told him, he said, he said, now, I want you to bring us an illustration next Sunday. Bring something, illustrate and bring a Bible verse to show what you brought. So they said, okay. First one come in that day, and uh, he had, had a little candle. He got up in front of the class. He said, here's my candle. What's your Bible verse, Johnny? Ye are the light of the world. Very good, son. Sit down. Next little boy got up and said uh, he had a um, salt shaker. Salt shaker. And he said, held it up. She said, what's your Bible verse, son? He said, ye are the salt of the earth. Very good. Sit down. Next little boy got up, and uh, he had a little bitty egg, a little banny egg from a little banny chicken and held it up there and he said mine she said what is your bible verse for that son he said she hath done what she could <laughs> that was his bible verse. that's right and you know what uh, if, if you if you'll take that attitude if you'll take that attitude lord ain't much but i've done what i could you'll do things that's impossible quickly quickly i'll say this a christian is one who sees the invisible how can you see something that's invisible? Wait a minute. That's a contradiction. It's invisible, right? Right. But you can see it? Right. You can see. You can't see something that's invisible. Yeah, you can. We see things that's invisible. We sure do. We sure do. That's right, brother. We see it. We see it. 
The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 4, 18, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. As see, Moses, as seeing him, Abraham, as seeing him is invisible. You can't do that. You can't see something that's invisible unless you're a Christian. And our eye of faith sees them. That we look not at things that, are, that you can see, but on things you can't see. Somebody said, oh, look at what are you looking at? I'm looking at stuff you can't see. Well, how can you look at stuff you can't see? I'm a Christian. You can't do it. We're no better than you are, but we can see things you can't see. It's like this. There are three heavens, right? There are three. Number one, you see it when you go outside there this morning. Right outside the door, you'll see heaven number one. The Bible talks about man being caught up to third heaven. So if there's a third, there's a second, a first. And you say, out there is the first one. Birds fly in it. The Bible calls that heaven. Out there where birds are flying around. You see it today. Now tonight, when the stars come out, that's the second heaven. The Bible also calls that heaven. Where the stars and, and stuff are, and you can see it at night. The third is on past there where God lives. And they say, you see the first heaven by day, the second heaven by night, the third heaven by faith. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, brother, we're going there, and ain't nothing going to stop us. A Christian is somebody who can see the invisible. I, and I ain't got time, but I could preach about the Christian is somebody who can do the undoable. It goes the ungoable. We are, we is the unisable, brother. Uh, we say the unsayable. We make the unmakeable. We sing the unsingable. We walk the unwalkable. We can do stuff that the world can't do because Christ lives in us. And from everlasting to everlasting. Thank God that's what we have as Christians and the world can't stand that. You know what the world's hope is? Y'all come get sunk here. You know what the world's hope is? Here's the world's hope. They said years ago, I don't know if we're still doing this, but uh, years ago, this is the best hope they got, and they don't even know if they do this anymore. If you got had enough money, and you die of a heart attack, before you die, you could get on this list, and it was $50,000, that was, 30 years ago, it'd probably be a million now, 500000 Let's say you have $500,000, and what they'd do when you die, they'd rush you to the hospital and put you in a vault and quick freeze you, like that, before you start rotting, and freeze you, just like you are. And then they're going to put all these frozen people, capsules, shoot them up in outer space, where there ain't no atmosphere, so you don't, you don't just rot, turn back into dust. And you'll float around around like a, like a satellite or something up there. And then whenever science makes enough advancements to fix whatever killed you, like your heart or whatever, they're going to bring you back down here, thaw you out, put you a new heart or a new brain or a new whatever, and hook you up some jumper cables and get you going again and you get to live. That's their hope. I don't count on it. <laughs> don't count. First, I ain't giving them no $500,000. Well, Lord, they ain't never going to figure out something. You ain't going to figure out nothing to make people quit dying. Look, y'all, let's be honest. You honestly think if they did figure it out, that they're going to bring, they, I ain't gonna, he'll never know the difference. Just leave him up there. <laughs> we got enough people here to keep that 500000 That's what they do. They ain't going to bring you back down here and throw you out. That's the only hope they got. You know what the world has for hope for the future? None. Thank God. We know that there's a future and there's something better when we leave this old world. Boy, we ought to love him this morning. We ought to shout glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I, they hate us, but that's why they hate us. It ain't nothing we've done. It's because they hate who's on the inside of us. Jesus said they hated me first and they're going to hate you too. Let's stand together. Our heads are bowed. Everybody stand together. Our heads are bowed. They're going to sing something in a minute. We ought to gather around this altar this morning just worship the Lord and thank Him for what He's done. Maybe you're here this morning your life's all messed up and you need to get straightened out today. Be a good time to get in this altar. Good time getting this altar. Get your heart right. Husbands and wives, kids going to camp. Be a good time, buddy. Be a good time, teenager.
be a good time, young man, mama, daddy, visitor, church member. Let's come. Father, we thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you, Lord, that we know the unknowable. Thank you, Lord, we can see the invisible. Thank you, Lord, we can do the impossible. Thank you, Lord, God, that we we can uh, uh, attain the unattainable as far as this world goes. Thank you, Lord, the Holy Spirit living inside of us. Now, Lord, I pray for that one here this morning who needs to come. Lord, if they'll come down here and get their heart right, Lord, bless us today. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Do a work here in somebody's heart, we ask. In Jesus' name we pray and for His sake. Amen. They're singing this morning. I wonder how many of you let's meet me around here this morning and say, you know what? I'm going to pray for a good week of camp. I'm going to pray for our kids. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. Come on. Let's ask the Lord to help us today. If you need to come this morning, maybe your life's all messed up. Why don't you come on today? Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. I didn't see him walk on water or calm the raging sea. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's right. Oh, let's pray for a good week this week. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. Amen. And one day I'll see yeah. him Amen. look on Amen. his Everybody going to camp. Adults, driving, bus, don't matter. We're going to have a meeting after service tonight. Very important. So be sure and be here. Everybody else, got a special message for you tonight. Don't miss it. Uh, don't forget the clothes, ladies. Tap out with the girls. Also, put that down on your calendar. August 12th, we'll be going to the Valdez Festival to sing and preach and give out tracks. Uh, the Virginia trip, July 27, 28, 29. If you're going to Virginia, we're going to start to sign up probably maybe tonight or at least next Sunday, okay? All right. Amen. So I'm still praying this morning. Y'all be careful getting out of here. There's a lot of kids running around back yonder. And uh, pray, uh, be back here this evening. Lord bless you, Lord. Amen. All righty. We'll bow our head and be dismissed in prayer. After this, fellowship a little bit and be friendly. If you're not signed up for camp, you ain't got one of them papers, get it. And anybody else who's going, you got to get on our day's it, last day. All right, let's bow. Aunt, why don't you dismiss us, brother? Everybody fellowship before you go.